celebrate the vigil of the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Within this liturgy, we will have the Episcopal crowning of the image of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our presider is the Archbishop of Davao, His Excellency Romolo G. Valles. Please all stand for our entrance hymn.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we have just begun the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Eucharist, on the eve of the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. And in the special Mass in the Shrine of Santa Ana, the Mother of Mary, we will have the crowning of the daughter of Saint Anne, the special image of Blessed Mother. So for this parish, it is now part of its history that we continue to show our love for Blessed Mother, our love for Saint Anne and Saint Joachim in this parish through them, especially to our Blessed Mother, we are strengthened in our faith. And so let us prepare for this Holy Eucharist by recalling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us the everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserve her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be bound from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
scriptural reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hope in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great 
and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month of, for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, here we are again together in this beautiful shrine of Saint Anne on the eve of the Vesperas of the great solemnity of the, of the Immaculate Conception. I'm happy that this evening's Eucharist, and even today, on the eve of that, of that great feast celebration, again of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, we are doing something which now be written in the history of this shrine. The, what is particularly described as the Episcopal coronation of the image of a Blessed Mother, of the image of the Immaculate Conception. It is Episcopal because that is, uh, that crowning is mandated by the uh, but by the saying yes of the bishop to the request of the shrine rector or parish priest, the image will be crowned. And in the decree, which you would hear after this homily, before the actual crowning, coronation, uh, it is simply a beautiful tradition in the church that we do the act of crowning, coronation of the image of the dead mother. Now I will quickly say that crowning is only a symbol, but we hope that in each one's heart this evening, each one in our faith, we hold dear a blessed mother and crown her of oh, our love and devotion. Crown her with our faithfulness of our great affection for her and that affection, coronation, uh, that would lead us to a deeper faith in her son. Now that this coronation, this what I call Palajunar, a kind of sacramental, sacramental, but just so beautiful. 
is significant because I don't know what is reasoning why he thought of this coronation, but I think it flowed from what we did on September 8th, uh, uh, birthday of, uh, of, of the Blessed Mother, because we made a big thing about that here in the shrine, Santa Ana shrine, like today, because when we say Immaculada Concepcion, Purissima Concepcion, huh? Immaculate Concepcion, I'd like to pound it again in our head, that miraculous, that act of God happened in the womb of Saint Anne. That is bluntly said. Uh, we, we have to think concretely in our faith that the Blessed Mother was prepared by God to be the mother of Jesus, of the coming Savior, think of Advent. Immaculate Conception is a fitting feast in the season of Advent. That God in His immense love and power wanted to be sure that her son, His son, will be born for us in a fitting way, not in a magical way, but backwards pa ang mother, baby pa, ikonsip pa ang mother of a Savior in the womb of Saint Anne. God acted with great love and care, spared this life in Mary in the womb of Saint Anne from the terrible effect of sin. That's why she was conceived in an immaculate way in the womb of Saint Anne, I become repetitious. And it, this evening, once again, we're invited by the church to renew our faith, not only in this particular intervention of God, but to extend that remembrance of this particular act to us today that God will continue to reach out to us in many ways that even we cannot imagine all. Before we make the move to come to God, to go to Him, to get near to Him, God comes to us first. That's why He came to Saint Anne in God's action prepared the life that would become the Blessed Mother in her, spared from the terrible effects of sin. Now, what is that terrible thing we have in the first reading today? Passed backward from the book of Genesis, what happened there when the first act of man not to obey God, to think that he and she, the couple, could manage without God. Isn't it a beautiful reminder for us because we do the same today that we can manage without God. That story is not in the past, but the same today, with terrible effects. Even how much you rationalize and reason out, we are okay. We are very bright. Control the population. Allow abortion. Read the news today. Read very well. News today about the bright Kunonga decision to curb kill babies in the name of progress. Read the news today. That is from the beginning. Man thought that we could manage without God. But for a moment, my dear friends, 
Look how God dealt with the sinful, original sin of Adam and Eve. It was God, read the scripture of Benuel, it was God who made the first move. God made the first step and he did not say, Hoy Adan, mga buang mong dua, iba makasala. No. God said gently, where are you? When we sing today, the first move of God is not to condemn us, but he will simply, like the first reading, like a father, a gentle father, where are you? Bisa kebawa nunggu siang asal. And then, Adam na tarantar, na nakuk mi kay hubuk kami we are naked. Ang gino in town paka fatherly, who told you that you are naked? Very gentle. Hubuk na God, who told you that you are naked? And then, Adam began to say, Naulah me, nakasalak me. It was the woman who ate me. And then God said, What happened? Pagkabutan sa gino. What happened? Ako pa itong mga demonyo mo. Supakit mo, magbambuang gino. Nantrangan ako. What happened? Read the story very well. And if we are sinners, we will see how good that God is. And then, God was so upset, ang first target niya, dili siya siya na nausiba. He scolded, confronted Satan, who tempted his children. And already, wala pa immaculate conception, fast forward, even in the first reading book of Genesis, God said, I will put an enmity between you, serpent, between you, evil, and my children. I will make sure that dili gilwa amigo, that dili umakadool sa kong mga anak. In the beginning, my dear friends, naana sa heart and mind of God for us to be immaculate, for us to be cleansed from sin. And when he planned that his son is to be born, first act niya, even na, wala pa. The mother of the Savior was conceived without sin. I would like to suggest, my dear brothers and sisters, on this beautiful occasion, drawing our attention to the Blessed Mother, drawing our attention to Saint Anne, that God never tires to deal with us. Gently and lovingly, so that we can again, the season of Advent, prepare with confidence, with faith, that God, like the first reading today, God, like how he dealt with Mary, the lowly servant girl in Nazareth, so gently, but showing that God will intervene in our lives. It only requires a simple yes, not a complicated yes, but a faithful yes. I don't know if the fathers would agree with me. It may sound blasphemous, but I don't think Mary understood all the things that she would carry when she said yes. But it was a complete yes because simply this girl in Nazareth, the statue will crown, she said yes 
with their whole heart and mind, simply trusting that God will intervene. God will act with His love for each one of us. This evening, when I would be aided, assisted by Father Junar in crowning the statue, when that act happens, yes, look at that moment, but we will close our eyes for a moment in that act of coronation. And let it be a crowning, a hugging, a whispering to Blessed Mother. Keep us close to your heart as you kept Jesus, your Son, our Savior. May we be all trusting. We are all like Adam and Eve, like them. But also this evening, as we crown the statue of Blessed Mother, we are assured that forgiveness and life and fullness does not depend alone by the steps that we go back to the Lord. But we are reminded that it is the Lord who is always asking, where are you? What happened? It was the Lord with a big surprise, the Lord who came to Mary and telling her, through you, the Savior of mankind will be born. May this occasion, brothers and sisters, be a true renewal of our faith in Jesus, in His Church, in a Blessed Mother, and may it be a renewal that indeed we cannot go around and continue living, not mindful of the design and plan of God for us. Lastly, Padre Junar, I'm happy that in the shrine we have started to de develop mga plural, mga devotions because we need badly signs and symbols. Man by it, man and woman, by our very nature, we are we can be truly touched by signs and symbols. Per se, this is just a statue. But this is a sign of something beyond us, of the presence of God. So in the shrine of these great mysteries, again I use, of the great and wonderful interventions of God. In this shrine, we are reminded, and hopefully the reminders in this shrine would touch our hearts so that the ongoing interventions of God will happen in each one of us. On September 8th, Shrine of St. Anne, with great devotion, we celebrated the birthday of the Blessed Mother. And this shrine has started quite an unknown devotion, but in many parts of the world, that is a devotion. My statue put the baby Mary. And that's beautiful, the Bambina. And I hope that would elicit by sign and symbols how loved we are that God gave us a mother. Today, in this crowning of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which again I emphasize, imagine that happening in the person of Saint Anne. This is her sign. Again, we remember that God never tires of us. 
if we are gloomy, discouraged, distressed, if one finds herself and himself not worthy to come to church because medyo ay malayo na sa simbahan, I'm, I'm a sin, sinful, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. Remember today, the gospel is not about the great ones. It is about the lowly virgin of Nazareth. It is about God saying, where are you? What's happening to you? Because again, the great design of God is that we will be cleansed. Like Mary, we all become immaculate, far from sin and joyful and confident, leading meaningful lives with the rich or poor because truly we are all God's children. Let us now listen to the decree of the Episcopal Coronation of the Image of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Decree. I, Most Reverend Romulo G. Valles, D.D., by the grace of God and the favor of the Holy See, Archbishop of Davao, Whereas the Church, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, honors the Blessed Virgin Mary, in whom the King of Ages took human flesh, as our Lady and our Queen, out of reverence for her great dignity, one of the signs of honor that has become customary is the placing of a regal crown on images of Mary that are the objects of special veneration by the faithful. Wherefore, by virtue of the office vested upon me, after having reviewed the petition of Reverend Father Jose Junar de la Victoria, the Paris priest of Santa Ana Shrine Paris, Davao City, do hereby decree and promulgate the Episcopal coronation of the image of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary of the Santa Ana Shrine Paris, Davao City. Given this seventh day of December, in the year of our Lord 2022, at the Metropolitan Chancery of Davao, signed Romulo G. Valles, D.D., Archbishop of Davao. Let us now witness the rite of crowning of the image. Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth, for in your mercy and justice, you cast down the mighty and exalt the lowly. Your marvelous wisdom is shown above all in the Word made flesh and in his virgin mother. For he, your son, who freely humbled himself even unto death on the cross, now sits at your right hand and is radiant with unending glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and she, the virgin who wished to be called your servant, was singled out to be the mother of the Redeemer and true mother of all the living. Now she is exalted above, above the choirs of angels and reigns in glory with her son. 
praying for all of us, the Queen of Mercy pleading for grace. Merciful Lord, look upon your servants who, by crowning this image of the mother of your son, proclaim him as king of all creation and approach her as our queen. Give us the grace to follow them in serving you, to do what love demands for the sake of our brothers and sisters, to deny ourselves and sped ourselves so as to win our neighbors for you, to be lowly on earth so as to be exalted in heaven, where you reward your faithful servants with the crown of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Mary, Virgin forever, most worthy Queen of the world, pray for our peace and salvation, for you are our Mother of Christ, the Lord and the Savior of all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us humbly pray to God our Father, who has done great things for the Blessed Virgin Mary and continues his marvelous works in the Church. For each intercession we say, Lord Almighty, hear us. Lord Almighty, hear us. For the Church, that in unison with Mary, it may proclaim the wonderful works of God and make His mercy known to all nations. For He cast down the mighty from their thrones and raises up the lowly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, hear us. For all the peoples of the earth, that under the impulse of the Holy Spirit, they may be gathered into the one people of God under the rule of Christ the King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, hear us. For harmony among nations, that through the prayers of the Queen of Peace, Hatred may be laid to rest, wars ended, and all the earth enjoy prosperity and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, hear us. For those who endure illness, poverty, loneliness, imprisonment, or per persecution, that the Blessed Virgin the Queen of Mercy may strengthen and encourage them with a mother's care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, hear us. For all here present, that, recognizing the unique dignity of the Blessed Virgin, we may try to imitate her humility and spirit of service and daily love her more and more. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, hear us. Lord God, through the prayers of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, whom you have given us 
for our mother and queen. Grant that we too may share in the fullness of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
and grant that as we profess her on account of your provenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his faithful, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses and place her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Dromolo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints we have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the, of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Receiving the Holy Communion.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserve Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel. Act of Consecration of the Filipino People to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Beloved Mother of Jesus and our Mother, trustingly, we lay before you all the longings and hopes, sufferings and anxieties of all our people. To your Immaculate Heart, we raise from our hearts this act of entrustment and consecration. Embrace us, dear Mother, and gather each one of us within your saving mantle. Take us within your motherly love. Immaculate Heart of Mary, we seek to unite ourselves with the consecration which Jesus, your Son, made to his heavenly Father on the night before he gave his life for us, when he prayed, for their sakes, I consecrate myself, that they also may be consecrated in truth. His consecration obtains pardon and mercy, and secures redemption for all sinners and from all sin. Its power overcomes every evil which the powers of darkness awaken in human hearts throughout history. It joins us in his heart to make us one in the grace of his pastoral mystery. Immaculate Heart of Mary, your heart is most holy, united with your Son's redeeming consecration. As we entrust ourselves to you, help us to live in trust Jesus' consecration faithfully each day. Deliver us from the power of sin in all its forms and manifestations, in personal and social living. Help us to strive to raise up in our land a civilization of solidarity, justice, and love by the grace of the Spirit of Jesus. May the infinite power of the merciful love of God through your motherly intercession be revealed in our history as a people. May it change our hearts to the likeness of the pierced heart of Jesus and the likeness of your own immaculate heart. By this consecration, may we become ever more truly Pueblo Amante de Maria, a people that loves you mightily in its own heart, a people you make each day ever more your own, held securely and cherished in your immaculate heart. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now listen to the word of thanks of our parish priest, Father Junar de la Victoria. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. It's a moving uh, celebration. If liturgy is about the smells and bells that moves us inwardly, I have lost sense of time and space in this celebration. And maybe I thought that we have loved Mary, express our love to God, but God has come to us first, as the Archbishop has said, and the first steps are in the figures of Saint Anne and Mary, who loved us as well. Murag akong gibati na kaniha, so palakpakan natong ginoon ni ngatong kasi nati ang karon. May nala na kasulat ko gamay kay murag wajuk ko sa akong pagbuotro sa akong gibati, no? Before we end the celebration, I wish to thank Archbishop 
Romulo G. Valles for granting the Santa Ana Shrine Parish this privilege of the Episcopal crowning of the image of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Salamat yung kaayo. Actually, also, even if he's not here, he's with us in the sense that Bishop Joy also helped in a lot of ways. Bishop Joy Tunnel, na tagadiri jud sa Santa Ana. Because it was to him that I first expressed these thoughts and devotion as well as I express it with Archbishop. Onya, nitabang jud putya o pagpasabot. Ni ining importante day ng nai corona jud nga stable. Nga di day ni corona nga bulak-bulak lang. Nga na jud ay rito po. Si Archbishop po nag-remind sa ako ni Ana. So... Truly, Archbishop, this is a full circle. If we are to look at it at, uh, from the point of view of our celebration, December 8th, the Immaculate Conception, Gimabdo si Maria ni Santa Ana. Kung sa September 8th, Gipanganak si Maria ni Santa Ana. It uh, allows us to deepen our devotion to Mary as well as uh, understand uh, in her life how God works in our lives as well in families like St. Anne and Joaquin and also, hopefully, in our lives. We thank Monsignor Jimmy and the seminarians, uh, Junel, Soren, and Amil, for assisting us in our celebration today, uh, together with the Santa Ana Shrine Parish Sacristans, uh, servers, lay Eucharistic ministers, lectors, and commentators. And I also thank and acknowledge the brother priests who are here with me to the, this evening, with us this evening, of course, Father Emmanuel Kalumpong, um, Father Jasper Alteche, the official gospel reader, proclaimer, <laughs> and the Father William Cajes, Father Elneri Minez, uh, Father Minying, who was assigned here as well before, and Father Russell Bantiles, who uh, was assigned po din here before, and Father Francis Moneda, my brother, Franciscan priest. Uh, nato sila. Together with uh, my, our brother Franciscans who are here as well. Your presence surely adds to the Archdiocesan celebration of this evening's coronation. We thank our choir, the Fate Line, Palapakanato Silanganari Tunga, for being with us. Together with the uh, Santa Ana Parish staff, the pastoral team, the parish uh, ministries, see si Atigla Singh who made this beautiful together with all the help of the volunteers in the flower arrangement, uh, arrangements. See, si Brother Perry, uh, where is Brother Perry? Uh, and Brother Yorli, these are the missionary brothers of St. Therese for uh, the repainting the image, making it uh, new uh, for us, and as well as the statues here in uh, our parish of St. Anne and Mary. We thank our offers, Mr. Marcelino Escalada Jr., who is at the back, uh, uh, fondly called uh, June, for your great support to the local church here in the Archdiocese of Davao. And this is Gituyo Yudpod nga, dapat ni siya, if you remember, Holy Week ni Pud siya, um, just to give honor that he was, he had given his best in the public service in the past years as General Manager of the National Housing Authority. Siya itong nag-offer ganiha uh, din he. So, uh, Mr. June Escalada, it's not only an honor for us, but truly an honor of Davao City that you have represented no, uh, the good heart of the Davaoenos in serving our nation. Palakpakan nato si Mr. June Escalada. He is joined with my, uh, our classmates sa college, sa seminary. And uh, partner niya sa pag-offer uh, ganiha, Si Mrs. Aurora de la Victoria. Ako ning nailhan nga akong inahan. <laughs> I know that this would be meaningful to her because she is a cancer survivor. Uh, fought well with cancer in the past. and um, But not only that, but she's a great supporter of vocation, not only to mine, but also even uh, to the seminaries, uh, sh showed really that great love for vocation did not end with me, but even uh, as well, Hantud Karono, Ampuaniya, mas 
mas balaan pa na sa akong mga humili ako na siya ma-mention no? mas balaan pa din siya no o uh, mas maampuon nako no? so salamat sa mong pag-ampo uh, to make us now faithful in our vocations as well as praying for vocations the one who brought to us uh, the bearer of the crown of Mary si Mr. Sedi Batu and Maan Almeria who represent all of us who have a deep love and devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Salamat. Salamat ninyo. For Tien and the Batu family for hand carrying the crown from Manila. For she's not here, uh, Mrs. Monet Francisco in Bulacan. Kaya ang corona, gihimo pa dito sa Bulacan. No? Who made the crown of the seven stars actually of the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We thank uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Brenda Milan for the photo coverage, for being here. What a beautiful surprise, making this uh, day special with your presence as well. For the DXGN 89.9, who make it possible for all of us not only to be here physically present, but for the, the rest of those uh, faithful, uh, join us in uh, prayer over the streamlining. You know? with Father Richie Gamaya as the Managing Director of DSGN and his staff, uh, who are uh, especially who are here. For our parish, Sokom, na uh, nagdrambit yun aning mong panghitabo, si Anton Vidal, <laughs> na iya yun yung gipakita sa atong uh, Facebook, uh, uh, helping us uh, promote this evening's event. And for all of you um, that have been part of this, uh, sa atong team din his uh, Parokya. Labi na kaninyo mga GKK leaders ang nasa ministriya. Pagtanaw na ko ganiha, kamo d'yo'y nakapuno aning kadaghanan din hikaro simbahan. Dako, kaya kong pasalamat. This is now our fourth year di ay, no? Of parochial uh, consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary following the 33 days of morning glory. So our crowning Archbishop is assuredly coupled with our devotion for the past 32 days, following the 33 days to the morning glory, and the fourth year now of our parish spirituality and devotion. Salamat ka natong tanan, salamat ka ninyo, salamat Archbishop. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Holy Eucharist is ended. Let us all go in peace with the Blessed Mother and Saint Anne always accompanying us. Thanks be to God.
¡Viva la Virgen! ¡Viva Santa Ana! Og na humana ang atong Episcopal Coronation sa imahe sa Immaculate Virgin Mary din sa Santa Ana Shrine Parish. Og uh, daghan kay salamat sa mga taga-parokya din sa Santa Ana Shrine. Labi na sa atong gura paroko nga si Father Junar de la Victoria. Og uh, sa ko ang uh, pagkuano, nagpasalamat po siya, pabot pa salamat sa naghatag ni ining imahe nga gikan pa sa paete. Og again, kung gusto niyo makahibalo sa mga detalye ni ining Episcopal Coronation, Ito na atay, video sa itong interview ko ba si Father Junar. Umayong salam, uh, mayong gabi iugdaghan kayong salamat. Kinisi ate Christine May Camus, I Herald. Music